Uh, the governor is going to uh, speak today about the economics of data fisheries. We also introduced the new commissioner of the head of human resources, Pat Kelly, who's going to as well. The governor will take two questions, uh, this time in the mix, and after we send it to the app, and the app will make some remarks, and take some more questions. So, without any further ado, here's Senator Paul Kelly, who's going to make it. Great to be back, third year in a row, first yep. year as candidate. It's been a pleasure to be back. Today, the beginning of several discussions of how to move the industry forward. Uh, fishing industry in Maine has been great on the lobster side, but not so great in other areas. And so we really need to, to move the industry forward. For you, I want to be sure that I introduce Pat Kelleher, the new commissioner of the EMI, and let you know that we appointed Pat as acting in July. I told him, I said, I want to see how you perform the next few months because I don't want to be doing this again. <laughs> and then we appointed uh, the permanent commissioner, and I think it's the best decision that I could have made in your industry because he was very, very dedicated, and I hope that uh, you're not afraid to call him and work with him because we need your input in order to get the industry to move forward. Uh, the only way that the fishing industry can prosper is with the fishing and having a say in the direction of the industry. The industry in Maine is more than just jobs. The industry for me is an economic engine, but more importantly than that, is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle and the great heritage here in Maine is something that we need to make sure that it is made to prosper. One area of priority is the public, public health division. DMR has opened over 2,000 acres, prime shellfish flats, six packs taken. In addition to that, the lobster industry. I commend the lobster industry for fishing. Last year set a record. This year set another record. For the first year in the history of the state, we have landed over 100 million pounds of lobster. That is very, very important. And it's not only really important to Maine's economy, it's important to the state of Maine because Maine lobster are special and they're known to be special. In 2011, Maine purchased six ground fishing permits with 180,000 pounds of oil. I think that's a step forward in, in rebuilding the ground fish industry and what exchange benefited from an additional million pounds of ground fish that will land in the ocean. One thing that I, I do want to bring up with the uh, lobster fishing, the lobster harvest. Uh, a couple months ago, my wife and I had to go to a wedding, so we flew down to Florida, and we were by this restaurant. And as a big sign special of the day, Maine lobster. So I'm all excited to you know, go to the Maine and we're going to have a Maine lobster in Florida. So I go in and I start speaking to the owner. And it's Maine lobster. It's great. Uh, who's your distributor? Where'd you get it from? He said, Well, what's the name? He says, You're not from Maine. I said, What do you mean? He says, Maine lobster. He said, Well, nobody knows a Massachusetts lobster, so I call him Maine lobster. 
because they came out of Boston, uh, Massachusetts. So I'm working with our legal department. Seriously, I am working with the legal department to see if there isn't any way we can prevent that from happening in the future, because if they've got to call it a mean lobster, I want it to be a mean lobster. So, unfortunately, I had uh, Gulf of Mexico shrimp for my lunch. <laughs> industry needs to, we, we being the state and the industry, together need to work to make sure the main lobster and main fish are recognized throughout the world. So we need to market ourselves. We need to work harder at making sure that there's no substitute to the main lobster and the main fish. And I think that uh, I see Linda Bean here, and she's working very hard at trying to do that. We certainly are going to do everything we can on our part to make sure that the lobster fishermen from the state of Maine, when they land their lobster, they're going to get credit for having a Maine lobster. The lobster industry plays a major role in tourism, the hospitality industry. It's, it adds a tremendous amount of value to our economy. However, the million pounds that landed this year generated $331 million to our economy. If we had 2,005 prices, we would have brought over to $80 million to our economy. An additional $160 million would have been in the coastal area. One of the calls for the fishermen would benefit, the local economies would benefit. So I think it's important that as we land more pounds, that we get credit that they're main lobster, they're special, and that we do not allow our friends to the north or south to take credit uh, for our uh, main lobster.
it's a burden. The state has added a lot of uh, costs onto your electricity bill that will work it to remove. So I believe that we're going to be making some headway. We're starting. I will tell you this. In closing, I want to leave you with a, with a little message. <coughs> Mainers make about 82% of the national average per capita rate on average. It's way, way below where we need to be. <laughs> and the only way that we can solve this problem is if we, meaning the government and the citizens of Maine, work together to improve cost of living, improve the cost of doing business, and improve the entire attitude of Maine people. And what I mean by that is come November, we're going to have a real choice. We have the ability to remain a welfare state with entitlements and grow our entitlements, or we have the choice Buying and renewing the American dream. Our country responded on the American dream. I am a product of the American dream, and I believe in the American dream. So when you talk at the candidates, be it state, in the House, or the Senate, or the congressional races, you ask them which ones they stand for. It's a very clear choice. We either want to stay a welfare state or we want to move the American dream. Thank you. Now I'll take questions and then Pat will take over. Anyone? Yes, sir. Hi, Howdy Helton from Harvard. I'm curious if you've chosen the nominees for the New England Fisheries Management Council? No, I have not yet. Okay, thank seen. you. But they're working on that. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, the value uh, added processes are important during the value to our fish response, specifically the opposite fish. And as somebody who is uh, trying to start one of those down and down businesses, is having difficulty with access on that what your administration plans to do to bring those values Well, I, I will tell you, capital is a challenge, particularly in, in a startup. Uh, have you, and I will ask you right up, have you been in touch with our office? I have. I've uh, met with part of the committee. Okay. Well, you also need to speak to uh, John Gutierrez, who does the business side of it from DECD. Unfortunately, Maine is broken, so Maine can't just go out and, and set up angel funds. We have to track capital. And with the business climate that we've had for the last couple of decades, it's going to take a little longer than a year to attract capital. Uh, one of the things that we're doing that it's going to have more of a long-term implication is we're working on having natural gas to the whole state. That's a major effort that's going to be, hopefully, uh, going to have a positive announcement later in the spring. But there are things that we can do to FAME, SBA, uh, or fine credit. There are some, some areas that we can help. Other areas, if we have a really good proposal to MTI if it's an innovative proposal for a new process, for instance. We can work with MTI to see if we can have some grant money available. But most importantly, I think if you work with John and George Trevay, they can uh, hopefully, if nothing else, steer you in the future. Yes, sir. <coughs> Governor, my name is Robert Ray from Sunnington. 
and I'm asking about the promotional council from Alaska. Can we can we get into that to promote like Alaska does for their promotional name for their products? The same way as like we can we do the same thing in the state of Maine and ask there for their help because they're much more further ahead of for their promotion than we are. I, I absolutely agree with you. And let, let me tell you where we are with that. We, we've challenged one of my staff members to see where all the promotional and advertising money is in the state and how it's divvied up now. And we are trying very hard to pull it all in to see what, you know, how much we have and what we can do. The problem is this, is everybody's in their own little silo. And they don't have enough money to make a big splash, but they don't want to lose the little bit they have. And we, it's our job to convince them that if we pool everything together, we can have a much stronger, much more vibrant program than if everybody does their little thing. And so the answer is we want to go in that direction. It's a challenge breaking down silence. Uh, Governor, I thank you very much, and you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. 